All right, middle school students. All right, just calling everyone back. Attention back, okay. All right, so we have an awesome speaker today. You know him. His name's Wyatt Woodall. Woo! Everyone, round of applause. Yo, I am so proud of this guy. He does a great job every time, and more and more, he just gets better and better, and because that's Jesus working in his life. And uh, he has some really powerful things to share to you. So, all right, let's pray for him, and then we will focus in, okay? Um, dear Lord, uh, thank you for Wyatt and uh, the man of God that he is, and uh, he's growing to be, Lord. Uh, just thank you for the calling on his life. Um, and uh, as he is showing what it means to follow you as a student leader, and it's amazing to see. Uh, Jesus, we, we really love you, and, uh, and we, we thank you. Um, thank you for loving us. And as, you, as we can see, when Easter's coming, Lord, it will, will it just be a reminder of your death and resurrection, um, the, the foundation of our faith, our trust in you, Jesus Christ. Uh, we love you. Amen. All right, here he is. Amen. Okay, so I am a sophomore in high school, and I help lead the seventh grade boys. Um, and Ben has given me this amazing honor to share with you guys what Easter is all about. Okay, bear with me. I am a little bit nervous. Now, <laughs> I want to show you guys an example of what Easter is is definitely all about. Honestly, it's pretty terrifying. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Yep. The Easter Bunny, yep. <laughs> okay, the Easter Bunny is literally terrifying. There are pictures all over with people in terrifying Easter Bunny costumes and kids on their lap while parents are trying to get the most perfect picture. And it always takes like three hours and it's uncomfortable sitting on the stranger's lap, right? And you can't see their eyes or their face and you're sitting on this bony person's lap. I don't know, it's weird. But here are a few examples of this. All right, here's one example. It's a video. It's a video. So it's kind of, it's a really, really funny video. Monday.com has definitely changed and improved the way we work. <laughs> Having a place that provides a vision. Okay, watch. It's short. That was, I don't know if you saw it, it was the Easter Bunny. Here, wait, replay it. <laughs> He's so scared. <laughs> okay, that was my little funny thing. How can you not be afraid of that? That big animal, I don't know. What could, kid wouldn't be terrified? Okay, the good news is that that's actually not what Easter is all about. But before I get into that, I want you all to tell me your favorite part of Easter at the same time. On three, everyone shout as loud as you can your favorite part of Easter. One, two, three. three yeah, I love all those things too. And while I love those things, there is a much greater reason to love this holiday. It's how Jesus showed us real, his real and perfect and great love for us by dying on the cross for us. And so we will spend uh, three weeks diving into the series, which is called Real Love. So let's talk about this word that you use a lot, love. We say love, we love all kinds of things, right? And I want you to tell your friend or tell me what kinds of things that you have said that you loved. We use this word to try to tell people how much we value things. Go ahead and share, sorry. We, try to, we use this word to try to tell people how much we value things or people in our lives. We say that we love Spider-Man movies. All right, bring it back in. We say we love Spider-Man movies, and we love our parents. We say we love Christmas, and we say we love our best friend. We say we love our brand new Air Force Ones, and that we love our siblings. Or we love BC Pizza, and we love our classmates. We toss love around and say it about all different kinds of things, that it makes us wonder what exactly is perfect love or the right kind of love. What is real love, really? It's a big question to answer, one that could have so many answers. We look at TV shows, movies, or your family, friends, relationships. You've probably experienced real love at one time or another. 
But when we talk about or experience, but but when we talk about or experience the love of the Son, Jesus, it can get both more complicated and more fulfilling than ever. Some of us have come to church and heard about how Jesus loves you with the biggest love that you can think of, and we can wonder what that means. Some of you guys know exactly the feeling of the love of Christ. But for others, sometimes we find it hard to believe in that love because you haven't always felt or experienced it. We think sometimes we can, it's easier to think that God is angry or disappointed or distant because if God is big and all-knowing, then he knows our sins, our failures, all that we have ever done for better or for worse. He knows you've lied or you've cheated or had treated someone bad or anything that eats at your conscience. And, and I can get, I get it, guys, but I can get into a whole, like, a whole bunch of reasons and explain how much our Lord loves you personally. But for now, I want to show you one important foundational truth. No matter who you are, in your maturity or your faith, that no one, absolutely no one, has shown you real love better than Jesus. And that's what Easter is all about. It's a celebration of this important truth. Jesus loves you perfectly in the realest way possible. Now, we're going to get into the book of John, written by a guy named John. Oh, and First John. So John was a Jewish man, which meant that he grew up learning and studying the Old Testament scriptures. He grew up studying the history of his people and how God was faithful and loving to his people through their journey. In the Old Testament, it tells us that there will be a Savior, and, his sa and this Savior is Jesus, as we know. And so John knew this and was waiting for him. It had been a long time since God said that he would send Jesus, like hundreds and hundreds of years, waiting for this real love to arrive through Jesus. Let's say just for our purposes that John felt this, or yeah, felt this way. He probably wondered about God's promise. He wondered if God was disappointed or angry with them, or maybe he thought God had abandoned them or forgotten about them. John might have questioned whether or not this God was the God that he grew up learning about, who he said he was, that he was a faithful and loving God. But then something happened. Jesus happened. God had finally sent his son to fulfill his promise. And when we look at the four Gospels, the books that tell of Jesus' life, we see that John became one of Jesus' closest friends and disciples while he was on earth. John was able to witness it all. Jesus' every move. He saw how Jesus walked, how he talked, how he, his, he saw his, his sermons um, and parables and all that Jesus had taught about how we are to love God and others. The stories in the gospel show us how Jesus' followers struggled to understand some of his teachings. They saw that what Jesus was doing, but they had doubts and didn't always get it. They got confused sometimes, just like us. And then something incredible happened. I'll give you a hint. We celebrate it by calling it Easter. Another hint, it changed everything. Jesus' death and resurrection. This is the turning point in the story. It's the climax, you guys. Now, the definition of resurrect is to restore to life. But more specifically, bring a dead person to life. And at Easter... We remember the day that Jesus defeated death by raising from the grave and walking out of the tomb three days after his burial. Okay, crazy, right? Now, can any of you guys tell me anyone who you've seen, literally, who is dead for like a little bit and is now walking right now? Or even says or predicts that he will die and be risen? Nobody. This is a miracle, you guys. It's a big deal. Jesus told John that he would die for us and be raised from the dead, and he did exactly how he said he would. 
Now, knowing this, everyone who followed Jesus can trust what he says and said during his life. This is the foundational truth of theirs and our faith. Before Jesus came to the Jews who studied the Old Testament, or before Jesus, the Jews who studied the Old Testament knew that death was the consequence for their sin, for breaking God's commandment. That their physical death would mean separation from God forever unless they could pay for their sin through sacrifice because no one could live a perfect or sinless life. And that is why God stepped in by sending his son Jesus so that we would rescue, so that he could rescue us from this fate through his unfailing love. Okay, how many of you guys know by heart John 3.16? Raise your hands. Okay, Levi, give me John 3.16. Because you're in my small group. Thank you. That's right. God sent his one and only son to take our place to pay this debt that deserved death by living a sinless, perfect life that we could never do. When Jesus went to the cross for us, he made it possible for us and for our sins to be forgiven so we no longer had to bear the weight of all the things that we did wrong. So when Jesus came to life and defeated death, it meant that our sin and that death had no power over us anymore. Even though all of us will die to our physical bodies one day, that Jesus made a way so that we would not, so that, that would not be the end of our story. That we will be able to live with our Father in heaven forever. Forever after this life, you guys. This is an amazing reality, a truth. And the reason that so many of us know this verse, even unbelievers who know this verse, is because it is one of the most wonderful things that Jesus offer us, offered us. For God so loved. That is how the verse begins. Remember that. This is why Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross changed the world. In so many people's lives, including John's. He no longer had to wonder if God was one who kept his promises. The resurrection showed him that God really did love him. And every one of us, no matter what our pasts look like. Three things. First, God love, loves every person so much that he sent his son to die to the cross. On the cross. Second, God loves every person so much that he defeated death. And lastly, God loves every person so much that he made a way for all of us to be in an everlasting relationship with him. Now that is real love, you guys. That's what Easter shows us what exactly real love is. Okay, now let's look at what the Bible says directly. Turn to 1 John 4, 9. This is where John reflects about some of his experiences that he wrote to other believers, which means he is also talking to us. Let's take a look. Wait, wait. All right, John, first John 4, 9. God, so mu God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. Now look at what he says after this. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So Easter shows us exactly what real love is. Now let's look at the—oh, I'm sorry. Now remember, John was there when this happened. He walked with Jesus literally for three years. He watched him get crucified and, and alive again three days later. And so John knew better than most of us God's real love because he experienced it for himself up close and personal. Now, guys, this is not just true for John, but for us, too. We can experience this real love for ourselves, and Easter reminds us of that. 
Now, the stuff that John is telling us about what real love looks like can apply directly to us. Now, I'm going to challenge you guys to do a couple things this week to help you remember that stuff, this stuff. I want you guys to look at, a pas- at this passage again um, and read it a different way. And now, to help you, I want to show you what this looks like. So we're going to do it together, and we're going to read this. And whenever you see a blank, say your name. Ben, is this the right blank slide? Yeah, well, with the blanks. Okay, that's fine. Okay, whenever I point at you, say your name. And we're going to read this together. Ready? God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away sins. Okay, guys, this was a little difficult with a big group, but it's still helpful nonetheless. What this is called is personalizing a passage and helps us to figure out what it means for us specifically and how it, how it can apply instead of looking at it from a point of view where this is just a guy writing something to another guy really far away. But no, God is ultimately giving these instructions to write these things for us today. Guys, he's saying to us what real love looks like for us. We, we need to not only understand and receive this grace that the Son is giving us, but we need to go out and make disciples to share this incredible news with the world. Because when we truly understand this, we will want to share with others how amazing this is because it will well up a passion inside of you. So I also want to challenge you guys, second challenge, to take time this week to share with someone who hasn't received the good news. This week, share with somebody, okay? And this, this isn't just like something, this is, this is, it's a crucial part of being a follower of Jesus. I'll say that. Because Jesus before Jesus ascended into heaven, um, he commands us to go out and make disciples so that this world will taste and see the miracle of the cross and where God, the Father, sends his one and only Son out of pure love for his creation so that we may have a relationship with the eternal, and eternal life with the Father. And this is what Easter is all about. It demonstrates the real love of the cross. I know many of you are are at different places with your understanding of this, of your faith. I assure you that we all have to benefit from hearing this good news. We can keep leaning in and rediscover it over and over because it is so, so, so good. Amen? If you're hearing this for the first time or want to learn more, about this and how to put your faith in Jesus, I would love for you to talk to me or talk to Ben or talk to any of like the leaders here. This is not something that you will want to pass up. Guys, I am passionate about this because I have received this love and I have tasted and experienced the goodness of the Father. And I want so badly for everyone to experience it the way that I have. Lean into this you guys. All right, we're just about to close up. But as you go to your small group, think about and answer this question. How have you experienced Jesus' real love in your life? All right, I'm going to pray. Father, I pray that each and every one of us will rediscover and keep discovering the love that you offer through your son who died to take our place. Lord, I pray that this message would impact the lives of everybody in this room, Lord, that they will, they will see your love see, for what it is, Lord. 
We love you, Lord. Be with us. Amen. I do a small group.